I was able to open my eyes. I looked through my half-closed lids to the ground underneath me. It was already daylight. I waited a while longer without moving, then I started to stretch my body. I rolled on my back. The sun was over the hills in the east. It took me hours to straighten out my legs and drag myself downhill. I began to walk toward the place where Don Juan had left me, which was perhaps only a mile away. By mid-afternoon, I was barely at the edge of some woods, still a good quarter mile away. I could not walk anymore, not for any reason. I thought of mountain lions and tried to climb up a tree, but my arms could not support my weight. I leaned against a rock and resigned myself to die there. I was convinced that I would be food for mountain lions or other predators. I did not have the strength even to throw a rock. I was not hungry or thirsty. Around noon, I had found a small stream and had drunk a lot of water, but the water did not help to restore my strength. As I sat there in utter helplessness, I felt more despondent than afraid. I was so tired, I did not care about my fate, and I fell asleep. I woke up when something shook me. Don Juan was leaning over me. He helped me sit up and gave me some water and some gruel. He laughed and said that I looked wretched. I tried to tell him what happened, but he hushed me up and said that I had missed my mark, that the place I was supposed to meet him was about a hundred yards away. Don Juan rubbed my entire body with leaves and dumped me in a river. At first, I did not feel the coldness of the water, but little by little, I began to feel chilled, and then the cold became intolerable. Don Juan pulled me out and dried me with some leaves that had a peculiar scent. I put on my clothes and he led me away. Don Juan asked me if I felt strong enough to walk back to my car. The weird thing was I felt strong. I even ran up the side of a hill to prove it. On the way to my car, I stayed very close to Don Juan. I stumbled scores of times and he laughed. I noticed that his laughter was especially invigorating and it became a focal point of my replenishing. The more he laughed, the better I felt. Later, I narrated to Don Juan the sequence of events from the time he left me. Being suddenly awakened by loud noises and snapping branches, running for my life in the darkness, being touched and tormented all night long by the sounds of sloshing steps, squeaks, cracks, explosions, flappings, and the soft thumps of what felt like a herd of silent, smooth, weighted kangaroos stepping on my neck, all while crouching over my vomit with my jacket bundled on my stomach. He laughed all the way through my account, especially when I told him at one point I felt relieved because I thought it was one of his tricks. You always think you're being tricked. You trust yourself too much. You act like you know all the answers. You know nothing, my little friend, nothing. One cannot turn into a warrior overnight. Now you must go home and don't return until you've healed and your gap is closed.